This is Twit. Here's the mixed blessing summary written by Bjorn Rutenberg. Sorry, the <laughs> best I can do from the Eindhoven University of Technology describing what his research has uncovered. He wrote, Thunder Spy targets devices with a Thunderbolt port. And as we know, that's a USB type C port, which is Thunderbolt enabled typically. If your computer has such a port, an attacker who gets brief physical access to it can read and copy all of your data, even if your drive is encrypted and your computer is locked or set to sleep. Now that sounds really bad until he gets around to the part about the screwdriver, which we'll get to in a second, but it turns out that's not really necessary either. He says, Thunder Spy is stealth, meaning that you cannot find any traces of the attack. It does not require your involvement. So there's no phishing link or malicious piece of hardware that the attacker tricks you into using. Thunder Spy works even if you follow best security practices by locking or suspending your computer when leaving briefly, and if your system administrator has set up the device with secure boot, strong BIOS, and operating system account passwords, and an en enabled full disk encryption. All the attacker needs is five minutes alone with the computer, a screwdriver, and some easily portable hardware. It turns out screwdriver, not so necessary. But to do the full seven exploits, you do need a screwdriver. He says, we have found seven vulnerabilities in Intel's design and developed nine realistic scenarios how these could be exploited by a malicious party to get access to your system past the defenses that Intel had set up for your protection. We've developed a free and open source tool, SpyCheck, to determine whether your system is vulnerable. If it is found to be vulnerable, SpyCheck will guide you to recommendations on how to help protect your system. And I got so involved in his paper that I forgot to put a link. It's I think it's uh, oh, it's thunderspy.io, so that's easy to find. HTTPS colon slash slash thunderspy, T-H-U-N-D-E-R-S-P-Y dot I-O. And there you'll find a description, and he's got a Windows and a Linux version of his tool uh, and some other uh, stuff. Okay, so to get a quick sense for what this means, what he's talking about, uh, oh, and I should I should also mention, though this has been described as an evil made attack, meaning that it's you know, the physical presence thing is what we're now calling the evil made. And I would argue that it's not really an evil made unless your maid was trained at MIT. <laughs> That's an excellent so, point. That's an evil not, spy. Evil, yeah. 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 So... To get a quick sense for what this all means, the next step is to look at what he wrote in the abstract for his formal security research paper. It was 23 pages, I think, long, and I'm not going to drag everyone through it. It's not necessary because we, we want to get the, the gist of this. Uh, but it provides, the abstract provides some necessary and interesting background on Thunderbolt and what that implies. So he explains, Thunderbolt is a proprietary I.O. protocol promoted by Intel and included in a number of laptops, desktops, and other systems. As an external, and there's the key, as an external interconnect, it allows exposing the system's internal PCI Express, PCIe, domain to external devices. This is where we insert what could possibly go wrong? He says this enables high bandwidth, low latency use cases, such as external graphics cards. Being PCIe based, Thunderbolt devices possess direct memory access enabled I.O., allowing complete access to the state of a PC and the ability to read and write 
all of system memory. In recent years, the former characteristic, the ability to read and write all of system memory, has promoted research into attacks collectively known as evil made, which require an attacker controlled device and only seconds of physical access to the computer. Industry response has been twofold. First, hardware and OS vendors incorporated support for DMA remapping using IO memory management units, IO MMUs, which imposes memory protections on DMA. However, following various implementation issues, OS vendors classify DMA remapping as an optional countermeasure requiring driver support. Second, revised Thunderbolt controllers introduced a software-based access control measure enabling users to authorize trusted devices only. And I heard you mentioning on MacBreak Weekly, Leo, the notion of a whitelist. Unfortunately, we'll see that doesn't actually provide much protection, in fact. He says, as a result, unidentified devices should be barred from system access without prior user interaction. Sounds great. Although we're not supposed to call it a whitelist anymore, I realize... Uh, what, what, I forgot oh, what it's going to be. An allow list. An allow That's, list. An yes. allow list. Okay. Shocking. In the context, he's saying, of Thunderbolt, studies have primarily focused on employing DMA and IOMMU attacks on the PCIe level. We therefore investigate the feasibility of breaking Thunderbolt protocol security by analyzing the protocol and its software and hardware stack, as well as associated PCIe-based technology. In our study, we have found and experimentally confirmed multiple vulnerabilities that break all primary Thunderbolt 3 security claims. Based on our ongoing research, in this report, we disclose the following vulnerabilities seven of them, inadequate firmware verification schemes, weak device authentication scheme, use of un unauthenticated device metadata, backwards compatibility with legacy protocol versions, use of unauthenticated controller configurations, SPI flash interface deficiencies, and no Thunderbolt security on boot camp. Finally, he says, we, pre we present nine practical exploitation scenarios. Given an evil-made threat model and varying security levels, we demonstrate the ability to create arbitrary Thunderbolt device identities, clone user-authorized Thunderbolt devices, and finally, obtain PCIe connectivity to perform DMA attacks. In addition, we show unauthenticated overriding of security level configurations, including the ability to disable Thunderbolt security entirely and restoring Thunderbolt connectivity if the system is restricted to exclusively passing through USB and or DisplayPort. That is, if Thunderbolt uh, protocol has been disabled on the USB port, he can get it back. We conclude this report by demonstrating the ability to permanently disable Thunderbolt security and block all future firmware updates. In other words, once in, they can stay in. So, of course, we've used the very useful term security perimeter many times before. It's a conceptually clean way of establishing the idea of what's under protection where the barrier to penetration is, what sort of protection is available and needed, and where the resulting vulnerabilities lie. So, if nothing else, it seems very clear that this was necessary research. Even if its theoretical exploitability seems low, and frankly, as we'll see, it's actually not very low, but it is, you know, not remote in any way, it does require local access. It seems very clear that this was necessary research. Even if it's theoretical um, at this point, 
just look at how the purely and equally theoretical, actually way more theoretical, this is actually exploitable, specter and meltdown vulnerabilities hugely deepened our understanding of the exploitability of the many once believed to be safe CPU performance optimizations that all of our chips had at the time. So this research, this na the nature, this kind of research is super useful stuff.